Hallo, Didier Stevens hier, senior handler at the Internet Storm Center. So last week I wrote about a malicious document that somebody pointed me to and that turned out to be cleaned by antivirus. In this video I'm going to show you the different steps that I describe in uh, this diary entry, but um, what I'm going to do here in the video will be slightly different because I, I made some changes to uh, OLEDump to help us uh, with this and also I remember that I have a really old 010 editor template that I started and that can also help us. So let's run OLEDump on that sample and then you can see here two micro streams so it's an OOXML file, a PowerPoint file, and this here is the OLE file inside the zip container that contains the micro streams. And here, five and six micro streams. So, first looking at six, because that's an uppercase M, and so that tells us that there are actual statements in there. And all the statements that we see here, they are actually functions. And I don't see any auto execution here, like uh, auto open or something like that. So let's see in stream five, this should be empty because of the lowercase m. And indeed we just have attributes. So I don't see anything here clearly that uh, indicates how these uh, macros uh, are executed. So maybe this stream here, stream 5 has been stomped, mm, that something has been uh, made to it. So we're actually going to select the complete stream and see what we actually have. Okay, so here we have the compressed source code. And here should be the, the compiled code, but there are lots of zeros. And then here, that is unusual, you see a text deleted by Kaspersky Lab AV. Now, let me just do a dump like this, so that all uh, zero lines are uh, put together. Okay, so indeed, there's very little here in the stream. There's a text here deleted by Kaspersky Lab AV, and then just the attribute. So I've seen this before with another uh, antivirus that uh, cleaned a malicious document. And what they actually did here was to um, truncate the stream. So let's see if we can undo that and recover the actual file. Now, the version of OLEDump that I'm using here is a new version. 0064 and it comes with a new option option u unused data include unused data after the end of the stream so when you run all them here you have the length of the stream so the number of bytes in each stream and with option u we actually read past the end of the stream and see if we can find some more data. And here, for example, for stream 5, 20 more bytes were found. And also see now that the indicator is an uppercase M. So apparently there is something to be seen here. That is a statement. So I'm selecting this and decompressing the stream okay and, and now I get something like this so this this is not valid but you, you see that it looks like a function auto open so let's take a look at the binary data so indeed and, and there is a bit more here now there could be still more in in uh, uh, sectors that that follow this uh, because uh, the OLE file format, uh, the compound file binary uh, file format, is actually a, a file system inside a single file. And there are uh, sectors for the different streams. Now, to find out 
if uh, there are some sectors that have been freed or removed, we can use a tool developed by uh, Philippe Langerdeck, yeah, Decalage tool on Twitter. And that is Olimap. Now, if you run Olimap here on uh, this file, this will fail because this is an OOXML file. Mm. And Olimap is made for OLE files, so I actually have to extract the OLE file from the OOXML file. So this was the file here. Notice also that the timestamp here has changed, so that's a normal timestamp for Office documents created uh, by Microsoft Office. It should always be this, and if you see something like that, it means that it has, had, has been tampered with, has been changed, and that is probably the date when it was cleaned by the antivirus. So it's in Stream 30. I select Stream 30, I do a binary dump, and I write this to disk and I'm going to use the name here with extension.vir and now I can run again Olimap on this here okay so these are the headers that is fine and now we are going to look at the FAT and the mini FAT to see how the sectors are used so all the sectors are used here as you can see in the fat well and now let's look at the mini sectors in the mini fat and here we have some free sectors so you should not find this normally in an uh, OLE file produ uh, pro produced by Microsoft Office so this is most likely has been cleaned by uh, the antivirus so you have se next sector 44 here, and this is the end of the chain, so the end of the stream now. But we are going to extend this so that our end of chain is now here. Okay. So for that, I'm going to use a binary editor. So, <clears throat> and we have an entry here for sector 44, mini sector 44, and then followed by an end of chain indicator. Now, these values here are 32 bit values, little endian. So I should search here for 44, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then FE, FF, FF, FF. And we have only one hit. So here we have the mini FAT table that we can modify. So pointing to sector 44 and sector 44 is the end of chain. So what I'm going to do now here is assume that it is sequential because it usually, it normally is in office documents. So I'm going to put here in sector 45 so it's little endian, eh? 46, 47, 48, 49, and here the last one, end of chain, so FE. Like this, and let's run this again. Mini FAT here. And indeed now the stream has been extended with five more uh, mini sectors. So if I run OLIDUMP on the change that I just made, it's still 1196 because there's also a counter. There's not only the sectors, but there's also um, a counter for the size of the stream. But that's something that with option U, we can try to pass, uh, read past the stream. And now here indeed we have way more um, bytes, 340 extra bytes. So let's select this and do a dump. 
And then indeed here we, we have things that looks like to be compressed shellcode, a uh, message box error and things like that. And if we try to decompress this, uh, we still get errors. Okay. What is happening here is the following. And so let me yeah, select this. So this is the beginning of the compressed source code and we are interested in this one. So I'm going to search for this in the binary editor. So I'm taking this hexadecimal sequence, searching for that hexadecimal sequence here. And again, we are lucky only one hit. So here we are in the binary editor with the compressed VBA code. Compressed VBA code is stored inside OLE files as chunks, chunks of compressed data. And it starts with a magic sequence, which is just byte value one. So you have zero one here. That is the start of the compressed data. And then you have a sequence of compressed chunks. Compressed chunks starts with a header of just two bytes, and that is actually the size, and then followed by the actual compressed data. That size here, header, actually consists of a little endian 16-bit integer, where the most uh, the four most significant bits are actually flags. So the, the B here, the B, that is actually a flag. And the 0 to 0, that is the length of the data that, that follows um, minus 3. So to have the actual length, you have to add uh, 3. So 20, that's just about this, this size. And then I add 3, so that's way too much. And what, what we have here is this. Well, what we actually see uh, when uh, when we don't use option U. So here, that's where it stops, 0D, 0A. But as you can see, this, there is way more here. And so we need to, to change this size field so that is also included. So I'm going to select this. So that what I selected here in total is 346 bytes er, or hexadecimal 15A. I need to subtract 3 from that. So 15A minus 3 is 157. And then I need to enter this here. I have to leave the flag B. It's little engine. So 157 like this. And now I have changed the size of the chunk of compressed code so that it comp includes all the compressed code. So now when we try to decompress this, we should have the here. And here indeed, now we have properly decompressed VBA code. We can see the function auto open. So this is what makes the execution automatic. And here you have the different uh, commands and the calls to the different functions in the other stream to create the, the URL. And then at the end appears to be a, a message box. Okay. Now, just one last thing. If you don't use option U, you will still not see that because that uh, header with the size of the stream is, is still truncated. So, so I mean, the, the value in the header that indicates the size of the stream is still truncated. That is something that we can also fix. And in the blog post, I fixed that by searching for a value that uh, a byte value that resembles that size, that is equal to that size, sorry, and then modified with the editor. Here, I'm going to do something slightly different. I remembered 
that a long time ago I started to develop a zero one zero editor uh, template for OLE files, uh, the compound file binary format. As you can see, it's in 2013 that I started and since 2014 I have uh, no, no longer touched it. It is still not complete, it is uh, not working perfectly, but it is usable here for what we need. So I'm going to put this in uh, my beta repository so that you can use this if, if you want to. So I'm, and I'm going to apply the template here to this OLE file. Template run, the OLE template, and as you can see, yeah, we, we get an error. It is still not uh, complete, so we can ignore that error. But here, if you look into the template results, you can see that it was able to pass the several structures, like the dir entry structure for ishar, eh, the stream that has been truncated. So I can open this up and then here you have the field for the stream size, 1196. And that is what we need to increase. So let's see by how much we need to increase this. Let me run again, only dump. So stream five. So that's where it ends. Let's copy this and search this here. Okay, yeah, so it ends here. And what did we do we want to add is all of this until here again the 0D0A. And that is 313 bytes. Okay, so I need to add 330 bytes to 1196. 1196 plus 313 is 1509. 1509. Save this. So I entered it here in um, decimal. And then here you see the byte representation hexadecimal that has been modified. And now if I just run OLE dump without any special options here on the file, I have the two macros, the size 1509, that's what we said. What we wanted, I can select stream five, do the decompression. And here I have the data. And of course in stream says, I also have the data, well, the actual, the code. Hmm. So this is how we were able here to recover the VBA code that has been uh, removed by the antivirus. So it was not actually removed, but the stream was truncated. Hmm. So the, some sectors were marked as free. The size of the stream was uh, truncated and the size of the compressed chunk was also truncated. Huh? But by restoring everything as it should, we were able to recover the original document and extract the VBA code.